Each morning, thousands of cars stream into the heart of Toronto. The Don Valley Parkway is one of the main by. The parkway passes to the north of one part of Toronto's east end, and then follows the Don River and travels south into the center of the city. Above the eastern slope of the valley lies a well-populated section of Toronto, laced with residential streets and bordered with several main thoroughfares. Chief among them is Danforth Avenue. Until recent years, the area was populated largely by families of Anglo-Saxon origin. Within the last few years, however, the Danforth has seen several changes. Many of the faces on the street are those of newcomers in the last 10 to 15 years. Many shops have different names. The street has always had a great deal of vitality, but now its vigor is shared by a mixture of people who in other times might have appeared out of place to the longtime residents of the area. Today, they seem to be very much in place. One of these significant changes has been the rapid increase in the last several years of one particular group. These are the Greeks of Danforth. The largest concentration of Greeks in Toronto live in a rectangle of land sitting on a flat plateau above the Don River Valley. Danforth Avenue is on the north side with its concentration of stores, cars and people. Greenwood is on the east. Largely residential, this street was invaded three years ago by the marshalling yards for Toronto's east-west subway. Gerard Street lies across the south. It's a mixture of homes and shops. It lacks the energy and economic vitality of the Danforth. At the west side is Broadview. Homes, parks, churches. Toronto's downtown skyline is a bonus view for those living in houses facing Riverdale Park. Inside the rectangle, most of the streets are quite pleasant. Many of the houses are large enough to accommodate a second or even a third family. There are contrasts, of course. The area is well supplied with transportation. And as new Greek families move into Toronto, it seems natural that they move into an area such as this. As Glazer and Moynihan point out in their study, Beyond the Melting Pot, there is satisfaction in being with those who are like oneself. The ethnic group is something of an extended family or tribe. In less than five years, the Greek population of this area has gone from less than 5% to more than 20% of the total. In recent years, a great deal has been said about the desirability of a mosaic of ethnic groups in Canada. They say, let's help and encourage the immigrant to retain his cultural uniqueness while he's learning to function in Canadian society. Others question if enough is being done. The Hall Dennis Committee on Aims and Objectives of Education in Ontario asked in their report, what can be done consciously to prevent many children from rejecting the positive values of their immigrant homes? Do our schools succeed in making immigrant children proud or ashamed of their rich cultural heritage? Whether the ideal of a mosaic can be achieved is also open to question. How do you make it work? On what does it depend? Jim and Mary Lystridis live with their mother and father in a flat above a one-time store. Jim is 18. Mary is 15. 
When I first met them, they were going to a special public school to learn English as a second language. Jim's mother and father do not yet speak English. Could you tell me um, why your family uh, first came to Canada? The problem was uh, me and my sister, we needed to go for university school, to take university school lessons. And uh, the second was we need to hear job. You know, in my country, we went to found job for to study and to work together. Jim's parents left school after grade six. They find they must work a little harder in Canada, but they do make more money. I asked Jim if his parents would go to evening classes to learn English. Or would they want to do that? No, they don't thought of that. Why would they not want to do that? Um, the problem is we work now every night together, three mm. of us. I see. And. Uh, they don't think that because I work with them and I know English and I help them. Yes. If they need me, call me. I asked Jim if his father would want him and his sister to marry Greeks when they're old enough for marriage. My father say is uh, they like to marry with Greek people. And they want to give to them familiar boy or girl. Jim and his parents work as cleaners for an industrial maintenance company, while Mary does much of the housework and some quite beautiful needlework learned from her mother. I asked Jim what his father and mother think of Canada. My father say, uh, for the young people like me and my sister is good in Canada, but uh, for them it's very hard because they don't have used to work on other jobs before and uh, they feel now very hard the jobs and uh, for me and my sister is very good because the government and the others help uh, for us to study. Mary told me she likes Canada although she does want to visit Greece again someday but not to stay. Mary also told me about the local theater. And here a uh, Greek uh, uh, cinema. cinema. You mean, oh, a Greek Show. cinema. We call Leslie. this Athena. Athena. Yeah. Now, um, I saw on Danforth Avenue this morning a small uh, publishing company. They print yes. a newspaper yes. called the uh, Hellenic Tribune. Do you have a Greek newspaper that comes to your home? Oh, of course. Every weekend. In November of 1966, Mr. and Mrs. Kalisontis and their three children came from Greece. Less than a year later, they bought their own home. Demetra is 15. She told me why they wanted a house of their own. We bought because it's our home, and we don't like to stay with other people who don't like us, and when the house is yours, it's yours, you know? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Kalisontis is the family gardener. Tom is 18. Which school do you go to now? I'm, I'm still going to Danforth Tech. Which course are you taking? I'm taking the electricity and electronics course. This summer, Tom will work as a full-time cook. His earnings will go into the family account. Tom's father is also a cook. He had to leave school after grade four because his father died and he had to go to work. Dimitra explained why her father decided to bring his family to Canada. We came to Canada because of us, of the children, because um, we want to study more things that in Greece we couldn't. In Greece, um, it was difficult to go in a school without pain. On the subject of boyfriends and marriage, I asked Dimitra for her parents' views. No, my father wants a Greek boy or a Greek girl for my brother. But we don't think about marriage now. Do Greek girls go out with boys when they're 16 or 17 or 18? Oh, no, they're not going out with um, boys. There's little time for recreation, such as going to the movies, 
and in any event, the family earnings are used to pay for the house and the furniture. Tom did say that he enjoys visiting the park. When I have time, I like to go to the parks. I like to go to Withrow Park. You see, there are many Greeks down there, and we can speak our language. When I asked what their father's goals were in Canada, Tom answered. My father likes to see us to make our lives better. Tom concluded by saying, he was a poor guy. He didn't have things to make himself better, so he likes to help us to get things. In his book, The Eclipse of Community, Maurice Stein observed that the motive for abandoning old world lifestyles is the desire for fashionable mass-produced commodities in ever-increasing quantities. Mr. Liakos has been in Canada since 1930. He is the uncle of Anastasia and George Katsopoulos. His wife's sister is the widowed mother of Anastasia and George. We were talking about the concentration of Greeks in this part of Toronto. Another impression that I have is that most of the Greek people who come to Toronto have settled down in this area, around Danforth, Gerard, yeah. Pate, Carlisle. I forgot to mention that, because when the, my brothers come over, where are they going to be? Close to myself. Anastasia Kotsopoulos is 18. She started work soon after arriving in Canada 13 months ago. She also helps to do the housework in her uncle's home, where she lives with her mother and her brother. Uh, would you prefer to have a Greek boyfriend? It doesn't matter, Greek, English. Anastasia went to night school for a time to learn English, but when she started working overtime at her job, she had to give up the classes. I asked why Mrs. Katsopoulos had brought her children here from Greek Macedonia. She tried to get the children here to be more safety, because out there, just the way I told you, we don't know next 48 hours how it's going to be, or next six months, or next two years. And every once in a while there's a trouble out there. She might be conscripted in the army. George Katsopoulos is 16. What games do you play in the park? Soccer, lacrosse sometimes. Every, every game. Yeah. Do you like swimming? Yeah. Are Greeks good swimmers? Yeah. Uh, all of them? Not all of them, because the people who live in beside the sea, they can swim very well, but the people who live in the land, they can't swim. They don't know how. Oh, I see. Eighteen months ago, Mr. and Mrs. Theodoropoulos came from Kalamata in the Peloponnesus in the south of Greece. They have two children, Angela, 17, and Chris, nearly 14. Angela told me they came to Canada because life is better than in Greece, and so that she and her brother might study. How much school do you and Chris uh, hope to get? How many years do you hope to go to um, school? We're supposed to go to university, you know. My father wants me to be a doctor. Angela's father was a butcher in Greece. He does the same work here. He finished grade eight, but he'll make sure his children go much farther. The family is hardworking and independent. They'll soon buy their own home in this district. They watch many hours of television each week. The children told me it helped them very much to learn English. Chris told me of his hopes for later studies. You would like to be an engineer but your father would like you to be a lawyer. I see. Who's going to win? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> <laughs> Chris played soccer in Greece. He enjoys playing or going to see a soccer game here in Toronto. Do you swim? Yes. Do you have many opportunities to go swimming uh, here in Canada? Yes. Where, where do you go? Sunnyside Pool. Well, oh, you've been to the Sunnyside Pool. When would that be last? Uh, Riverdale last Pool, over here. The Riverdale Pool. Yes. In the company of their friend Nick, who came from Greece 12 years ago, the family often enjoys exploring the parks of Toronto.
Angela had told me she would prefer to marry a Greek when that time comes. She doesn't have a boyfriend yet. In the meantime, she keeps busy with school, homework, housework. Do you have a job for the summer? Oh, yes. I see. Just for the summer. And where, will you, where are you working? It's near here. Um, it's in, in Towers. It's on Carl and, um, Carl and Girard. Oh, yes. The big plaza, you know? Yes. What work are you doing there? Well, I'm a sales girl. I asked Angela one parting question. Who's the boss? In my family? Yes. In my idea? Yes. Or in my... In, in your idea. Well, my father. One or more of the children from each of these families has spent some time in this school about two or three miles east of the district where they live. It's a special school in that it caters to the needs of immigrant children learning English as a second language. In an earlier conversation with another Greek, I was told the Greek child may become ashamed of his parents who speak no English, of his name which sounds different, of his parents' language. But perhaps this is where the public school can help most, by providing an atmosphere of encouragement with respect to developing or retaining pride of heritage while at the same time making it possible for the immigrant student to learn how to function in his foster land. I asked George Baker, the principal of this school, for his thoughts on that subject. Well, Lou, quite often uh, we, there are opportunities in the regular school program where these students can show us some of their culture, um, in particular at our Christmas open house we had students uh, displaying some of the arts and crafts of Greece and Italy, Portugal. Uh, they do some of their dances, uh, not only for open houses, but during the regular phys ed program in the school. I'm hoping in the fall when our new home economics and industrial arts rooms are set up, that we will have the students cooking some of their native dishes. In his study, The Social Systems of American Ethnic Groups, Lloyd Warner has said that the ethnic parent tries to orient the child to an ethnic past, but the child often insists on being more American than Americans. We might read Canadians for Americans in that opinion and then ask if the situation applies here. I question George Baker on this. Given the situation that you've described, where the child in the school setting is being uh, given some encouragement to retain some sensitivity or some understanding of their, their parents' uh, culture or their own national identity, do you see any kind of conflict resulting as far as the children are concerned, not knowing whether they're supposed to go in one direction or the other? Yes, this, this does occur a good deal, Lou. Uh, I think especially for a youngster who perhaps comes from a, a rural area in, in Greece or Italy and is thrown into the big city situation in Toronto. Uh, certainly on their field trips they observe how our own Canadian uh, youngsters operate uh, and as a result there is a conflict in the home. However, I, I think that we are trying to overcome this conflict by bringing the parents in to the school, trying to explain what we are doing here, perhaps something about our Canadian culture. We try to have interpreters present so that perhaps there is a better understanding on the parents' part uh, of what we try to do in the school so that they will better understand the problems that their youngsters are experiencing. On the third floor of the Broadview YMCA, the Greek community operates one of several schools in Toronto for Greek children. Peggy Koravesi came from Athens two and a half years ago to do graduate studies in social work. She pays her way by teaching here. 
Peggy, I wonder if you could please tell me why the, the, the Greek parents uh, mm -hmm. send their children to the Greek school in the evening, as well as sending them to the public school in the daytime. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinion is that uh, Greeks want to keep their children Greeks, to know their language, to involve them uh, among uh, Greek peers and Greek adults, to learn about the Greek history, Greek geography, and uh, especially Greek Orthodox religion. Well, is it a good thing for the child to come to the Greek school? Yes, to come to the Greek school, but the thing that, uh, for my opinion, is not so good is that uh, the parents try to keep them only Greeks and avoid to leave them free to involve themselves to Canadian life. Miss Coravesi said that problems of security could result from the child being pushed one way by his parents and the Greek community and another way by the public schools and the Canadian community. She thought he would be in a margin between two cultures. But if the leaders, the teachers, the priests, the parents, Canadian or, or Greek, handle the child in the proper way so to understand that he belongs to the Greek nation, to the Greek community, as well as to Canada, then the child will be more or less in, uh, in a better position in, the, in terms of security. Nathan Glazer and Daniel Moynihan, in their 1963 study, beyond the melting pot, said it is true that language and culture are very largely lost in the first and second generations. And this makes the dream of cultural pluralism as unlikely as the hope of a melting pot. I asked Peggy if she thought the idea of groups of peoples with distinct identities functioning in Canadian society and at the same time retaining something of their cultural uniqueness could work and actually result in a mosaic in this country. Yes, but with limits. What I mean is that if we have always newcomers uh, and uh, we have something, some connection with the background country, then, and if the leaders of uh, the teachers, as I mentioned before, the priests or social workers or every, everyone that is an important person to the life of the people, uh, handle properly, then it can work. Miss Papa Flessa is a school board social worker. I asked her what she thought of the attempt to introduce the immigrant child to the English language and the Canadian way of life, and at the same time encourage him to retain knowledge and respect for his ethnic background. I think it's really difficult for the children to keep on this uh, double uh, loyalty, let's say. Uh, and they need to go ahead and uh, adjust to their environment and have an identity as Canadians. And after they acquire that, then they go back by themselves and explore their roots after they are secure enough in their new environment. I think that it's much easier to go back and look. If the parents insist so much on imposing the standards of their own uh, experience, let's say, the children become resentful of their uh, background instead of liking it, of wanting to find more about it. Do you feel that perhaps then the adults require or need some encouragement to move more definitely in the direction yes. of the Canadian way of life? Yes, I think, I think that what they want to be reassured of is that moving towards the Canadian, um, open up, opening up, to accept Canadian ways wouldn't mean that they're going to lose their identity. But they need a lot of help because there is, they uh, start uh, reacting to the children knowing more things very early. I asked her why the Greeks come to Canada. 
It is my personal point of view that they immigrate because of social pressures. Not so much because of economic pressures, but because they cannot go ahead and develop as far as they want to in their own country. We discussed the extensive use of the parks by the Greeks. Surely, I think it is. Uh, Greeks live outside their homes. And they just don't live in the house. They don't live inside at all. Uh, every opportunity they have to get outside to socialize. The Greeks I had seen were ambitious for themselves and for their children. I would call them upwardly mobile. They want to own a house, furniture, a car. They want to be well off and independent and they are willing to work hard to achieve these things. Upward mobility, very definitely. And also owning your own house is a symbol of status in Greece. Uh, that's the first thing people do when they have arrived at the first level of achievement. They also strive to have more education for their children. They never say no. Mary Karajani could be one of the children Miss Papaflesa meant. She came to Canada 13 years ago with her parents and a brother and two sisters. She was only seven then and could speak no English. As with the other families, she said they came for better opportunities and education for the children. Your mother and father felt there would be better opportunity. Have they in fact found those better yes. opportunities? Yes, oh yes. To them, having a secondary education, having an education, first of all, is very, very important. And we all have this. You know, they're quite proud that they had, you know, four children in school and they could support us without any assistance from anyone. Mary's family lives in the Vaughan Road, Eglinton district of Toronto. She said they like to be on their own, away from the areas where the Greeks are concentrated. Why? I think because we've been brought up here. You know, we aren't anti-Greek, but we aren't pro-Greek, you know, you know, we're very different. And it's very difficult for even my parents and us to understand each other, because we have different views. After all, we're more Canadian. When you say we, you mean the children? The children, the children. We're used to more, more freedom and, and, and speaking our minds. And we've just been brought up different. Of course, we were educated here, so we mixed in with other children, not only Greeks, not only Greeks, Canadians, every type. So, we're more liberal. Mary dances with a group of young people who do traditional Greek dancing for their own pleasure and the entertainment of others. They practice weekly in St. George's Greek Orthodox Church. Do you feel, in your case then, that you still have a considerable uh, awareness of uh, what you might call your Greekness, whatever is unique about Greek people as compared to whatever is unique about Canadian people or American people? I would say yes, in certain. For example, in my family, I would say me more than the other, than the other children. First of all, I like to speak the Greek language. I want to learn more about the country, more about Greece, more about Greek people, as a matter of fact. The music, the, the movies, everything that goes on, politics in Greece, I'm very interested. The dancing group often performs for audiences in various places. On the subject of boyfriends and marriage... I want a Greek boy. I would never even think of having anyone but a, a Greek boy. Mary has much liberalism and freedom in her makeup, but her views are tempered by her own background. I still have Greek traits in me that I just can't escape. The Greeks I have seen and spoken to are hardworking, proud, independent. The family unit is cohesive. They have two main goals, education for the children and security with upward mobility for the entire family. Most are now in the working class, but the next generation will likely rise on the class scale in terms of occupations and economic status. As for the idea, or perhaps the ideal of the Canadian mosaic, 
This depends as much on attitudes as on anything else. And that means the attitudes of all of us, not just the immigrants. Undoubtedly, there is acculturation as generation succeeds generation. But as long as the immigrant continues to join our landscape and our culture, it's up to all of us to provide opportunities and encouragement so he might retain love and respect for the cultural ties to his past while he becomes knowledgeable in the way of life that we know. The mosaic may be an ideal and pursuit of ideals doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll reach the goal. But if your game is striving toward goals, you should try going with someone who knows that game. The Greeks of Danforth do.